Hello, so today we want to talk about um, a Sharpology section, but specialising in plane blades. Um, we want to discuss how to um, fix the back of the basics, how to um, fix up very old plane blades that have got chips and dings in them, and then work through primary bevels, secondary bevels or micro bevels, using water stones, and also sharpening unusual shape plane blades like rebate block planes, blades, sh uh, very small spoke shave planes, blades from those, and uh, skew, uh, plane, skew uh, plane blades. So if we can start with the um, damaged uh, plane blades first, this is just an old Stanley plane blade. Uh, it has a ding in the front of it right on the edge, probably caused by hitting a nail or whatever in its, in its lifetime somewhere. So we're looking at this plane blade in this shape. We're looking at it like this. And the bottom we've got a, a bad thing in the bottom. Now, this needs to be removed, of course. We've got the primary bevel here. Not quite as bad as that, but that's how it is. Um, what I like to do is um, use for this to, to remove this uh, flat section rather than go to a water stone immediately I like to use uh, sandpaper we've now got some very nice um, uh, adhesive backs uh, sandpaper and I use a few different grits in this to do this and to achieve this uh, I start with 80 grit and then I've also got 160 and 320 grit this is just um, adhesive back sandpaper, which you can just either adhere to um, a table saw bench, or I've got a piece of marble here that I've used for this sort of thing. It can be a piece of uh, uh, glass. Anything that's flat will do the job for this. Now what we want to do is remove this ding in the middle of this plane blade. Now the quickest way to do that is to abrade the um, blade at 90 degrees. Now you can do it by hand, and just do a rough 90 degrees back and forth like this for a while. Or if you want to make it a bit more stable, you can get a block of wood like this and that can go behind the plane blade and make it 90 degrees and you'll find that sort of easier to make it, to keep it nice and 90 degrees to the sandpaper. Now you do, it's a reasonable amount of work here, but it's good to sort of move across the sandpaper gra uh, grades or grits and then move back again. So we start with 80 and then move over to the middle one, which is 180 in this case, and then 320 and then back to 80 again. And you'll find after a while that that will remove, if you look over here again, that will remove this slowly but surely up here until that's gone and then you've got quite a marked um, flat section on the edge of the blade. Now of course to get such a big um, mark or ding out, out of the bottom of that plane blade you're going to lose a lot of the primary bevel. So we need to, need to re-establish the primary bevel now which is the main bevel. So if we're looking at this plane blade, I'll remove this one now if you're looking at this plane blade on its side, it will look like this. And that will be flat across the bottom there where we removed that ding. The, mark, the, the primary bevel is not what it used to be. It's much shorter, but we want to bring it back so we've got a nice 25 degree primary bevel again. Now most bevels at most primary bevel, which is the first one, the first bevel, we'll come to the secondary bevels later on, is 29 degree, is 25 degrees normally. So um, the best way to do that is in our sharpening stones. Before we start using sharpening stones, what's really important is that these are water based, water lubricated sharpening stones from Shapton in Japan. They need to be uh, kept flat because if these stones aren't flat, and if they've got a hollow in it from being from use before, all that happened to the blade is it'll follow the shape of that 
stone, so that'll have a, a scallop effect. So these need to be kept flat, and the best way to do that, we think, uh, is on our using one of our lapping plates, which is about 16 millimetres thick. It's made out of mild steel, but it's been ground flat. So um, it's perfect for this sort of work. Um, you can use a spray glue to adhere. You need to use wet and dry sandpaper because it's a wet job, as opposed to the uh, first with the, with the uh, dry sandpaper here. This is in fact wet, so um, you can adhere it to the lapping plate with spray glue or just use water, and you'll find that because this is so flat, the wet and dry sandpaper will adhere to the um, uh, to the uh, lapping plate. Plenty of water. Now, we to get a 25 degree angle, we use the uh, Henriette honing guide, which we've discussed before on plenty of occasions. But to me, honing guides are much easier to use and going by hand you can certainly feel the angle there and and get it in the right spot and keep it going but often your hand will move a bit and it will go off scent go off off course and not be 25 degrees end up rounding it off etc but I just think that a, a, a honing guy which is which locks the plane into a degree into um, an angle is the way to go so this is um, using the a, a, an angle setting jig Moving around here, an angle setting jig, this one here, because the length of the blade that that, that, that protrudes from the honing guide determines the angle. If it's short, it's um, acute. If it's long, it's um, a much lower angle. So this is now set up using this uh, angle setting jig to 25 degrees. Now, this work we done mostly on a coarse stone. You can actually do it on the um, wet and dry sandpaper if you wish to get that going. To, that, that'll be fine because that's 120 grit which is quite coarse. Or you can go to something like this one here which is a 220 grit and work away until you slowly, and again it's not a bad idea to, to change back to this grit as you go along because it's handy um, to change grits until slightly but surely we take this off and we get back our 25 degree, that's that angle in there, 25 degree bevel. It does take some time. You may be inclined to think, well, perhaps we could use some electricity here <laughs> and perhaps use a, a, a grinding uh, Wheel, grinding wheels are certainly quick, but they certainly can be very hot and can get very, very hot. Although um, plain blades are quite a good heat sink, holding it back here, you think, oh, it's a bit warm, but an inch along, it'll be 200 degrees, and at the end, it may be three or four or 500 degrees in temperature. And if it gets that hot, it certainly will lose all its temper and will, in fact, ruin the blade because losing its temper will uh, it, it just won't keep its edge like it should do and um, it's very dangerous but um, so I just think that these stones are efficient they do the job the nice and we'll say stones also the the um, wet and dry sandpaper or the dry sandpaper they're certainly nice and coarse and they rip off the metal if after a while you want to replace this and put some clean paper on there by all means if you want to keep the sharp edges going so it's a bit, bit quicker the process but that's I think that's, that's the best way to do it then you sort of you're in control of what's going on, and you've now got a 25 degree bevel. Now, if we take, we've established our 25 degree primary bevel. So what we want to do now, this is our 25 degree bevel. What we're looking to do now is on the bottom to put a micro bevel. Now sometimes we, on, our, on our site we supply for our jack planes, etc. we supply a 30 degree or 50 degree um, micro bevel uh, plane blade which we do here and they can be ordered with such for for because um, often a customer will, will like 
one or two or three blades with his jack plane to give him some flexibility for different purposes. Um, and occasionally we'll get a phone call or an email to say, oh, you sent me a 25 degree uh, blade. When in fact we haven't, the 50 degree or 30 degree micro bevel is just a shiny, uh, a shiny, very fine line of bevel right on the edge of the plane blade and sometimes it's hard to see, but it is there. So all we need to do is, again, using our honing guide jig, is to put our plane blade in with a 25 degree bevel. And we, I recommend uh, on plane blades a 30 degree bevel on the micro bevel here, um, perhaps 35, but it's certainly not a big deal. But what's important is that you, the, the actual degrees are not a big deal, but in these sort of blades, but uh, certainly going back to the same uh, degrees every time you sharpen is a big deal because you want to sharpen the same spot each time, not start afresh, which is a much easier uh, and quicker result. So to establish this 20 to 30 degree bevel, all one needs to do is, I start with this 220 grit stone and back and forth three or four strokes, that's all you need, and you can already feel a burr on the back. This is very important because this little burr here that goes like that as I sharpen, it pushes the steel around the corner, that's exaggerated, it makes a little burr there. And you can feel it as you rub your thumb across the back of the blade. and. Um, that uh, just tells you that you're on the edge because that burr wouldn't go around the corner, so to speak, unless the stone was sharpening right on the edge. So that's important. So I use a 220 grit stone for that reason. These have all been flattened. I'll just show you how we do flatten that, just so you know. Um, I get, I haven't got one with me, I'll get a pencil and just mark across here some lines. And when you sharpen this, not sorry, when you flatten these blades, uh, these um, water stones, just go back and forth and you'll see that those lines are gone except for in the middle here. And that's telling us that, that there's a hollow in, the, in, that, in that stone. We need to go a bit longer until those lines go. And when those lines go, We'll know, yep, gone. We'll know that that, that term stone is now flat and ready for to sharpen with, to sharpen blades. Um, I know these two have been flattened previously. I haven't used this stone for a little while, but so a few strokes on the 220 grit. Then we'll move to the 1000 grit. A few more strokes. And I don't mean very many at all. And then we move to the a 5,000 and 8,000. Now you might ask the question, do I need all these stones? The answer is no, you don't. But what you do need is probably a 1,000 and an 8,000 to get started. But certainly a 220 grit is very handy as far as um, making sure you're quickly putting a, um, a burr on, on the back of the blade quickly and just determines or tells you that you're on the edge of the blade. Um, the 5,000 grit in between the 1,000 and 8,000 just means that you probably do less strokes on 8,000 if you use the 5,000 on the way through. It's handy, it's not critical, but it does make sharpening uh, a bit easier perhaps. Um, but really the amount of strokes you do, you could either do five on here and five on here, or 10 on here, um, and not use the 5,000 grit. So, I don't know. I, I do like using it because I know that each step as you go along, the, the finer grits remove the heavier marks on the blades. If you look under a microscope, you can see them. Uh, the, um, the scores that the grits make, and as you go along, they get finer and finer and finer. So here it's a nice polish on the 8000 grit, and that's sort of what we call sharp. And when you've done that micro bevel, and that's all sharp, as you go, as you go down the, the grits, the little uh, burr that we've made gets smaller and smaller as you go finer and finer, but it's still there, and that's got to be removed. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. 
I get the 8,000 grit stone and just wet it. It would be wet from previous use, but just for now. And you can just rub back and forth and just take off the, the burr on the backing. See it coming off, the black metal coming off, off the blade. Now, that's um, a pretty easy way to do it. Another way is to put a very fine, small ruler along there called the ruler trick. I'll just put the stone up here so we can see it better. That's a very, just a small, fine, six inch ruler. And that just, all that does is, is take up the blade a tiny amount, which make, and, and you end up putting a very small sliver of polish along the back. So we've got polish on the front, meaning polish on the back. Therefore, we've got no rate, zero radius and, and the blade is sharp. But it's important to do this. It's a very simple trick is to do that. Other, others will say they'd rather polish the whole back. Um, it's important the back of the blade is flat, of course, but polishing it down, right down the blade is, I don't see the advantage in that, given you, you cut up here on the edge, but uh, it can be done. The way to do that is to put the blade, put the stone and move it up and down like that, which gives us a, uh, a polish on, on, on the back of the, um, on the back of the stone. But as I say, the cutting edge is up here. Yes, this must be flat, but the cutting edge is up here, so that's what we can concentrate on, because that's what does the, does the job. Now, um, if all goes well, it's as simple as that. I don't think uh, we need to, if you haven't got a ding like we started out with a big hollow, you know, chip in the blade for some reason, and the blade's just being touched up, really we're talking out of the plane blade, a few strokes on each stone, and I mean a few strokes, then the back, to put that with the ruler trick on the back, just to put that fine uh, sliver of polish across the edge there, we're talking a couple of minutes, you know, and the blade is then back in the tool, ready to go again. I think it's um, a simple system, and as that, as that micro bevel, as we, as over time, and it can be a long time, it will take, that micro bevel will get bigger and bigger and bigger as every time you resharpen the blade. Now when that micro bevel gets up to here and halfway along the primary bevel, you probably say to yourself, well, this blade now needs a new, a new primary bevel and start again and bring that primary bevel back by using our coarse stones that we did, that we did previously uh, and then putting another new, a brand new micro bevel on the edge of the blade. But that takes a long time. I mean, it, it, we, all, we all use our blades at different, um, some guys use them all day, some guys use them once a month. But really we're, taking it, we're talking a long, long time for that micro bevel to creep up the primary bevel to, to a stage where you're nearly doing as much work sharpening the micro bevel as you would if you're doing the primary bevel. So it does take a year or two, depends on your use of course, until you say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re recreate a new micro bevel. So moving along, uh, we've now established our micro bevel on our plane blade and it's all good. And we've got a system as far as how to handle it going forward. Some plane blades aren't nice and square and straight like this jack plane blade. Um, some are short, like these two guys here. Some have different shapes, like this fellow, which is a, a, a rebate block plane. Um, how we handle these is there's not enough, if you put this small blade in, uh, in here, sorry, on, on, on the, uh, using the honing guide, you can't get enough extension uh, past to get the level, the blade angle you need. So we've in, uh, now include as an accessory these extension jaws, which work really well for this sort of work. They're um, aircraft uh, aluminium, polished, flat, 
and they've got the same, they've been milled with the same uh, dovetail type slot that are in the uh, honing guide originally, uh, and they go on like that, just tighten with um, nylon tipped grub screws which avoid any marks on the honing guide. So there, there that's done. So we've now got an extension on the honing guide as you can see. Um, so this little plain blade can now go in here and then we can set it up to now I'll set that on 30 degrees now as you can see I'll set it on 30 degrees now using this uh, angle setting jig but this angle setting jig of course is um, um, now setting this plane blade assuming it's in the top of the um, if I turn it around in the top of the honing guide uh, in fact it's higher which means that the angle won't be exactly what it says it might be uh, 28 degrees rather than 30 degrees um, so if that's the case that's fine because you're going to put a 28 degree micro bevel on this blade rather than the rather than 30 degree which is not relevant um, but what is relevant is you put it back in the same spot each time when you come back to sharpen this blade again it goes on 30 degrees there and you sharpen the same bevel the same area down here in the blade each time you resharpen so these extension jaws fix this problem here's a short, another shorter blade from a uh, spoke shave spoke shave blade and that just fits in there the same and it um, is you fit it again set it to 30 degrees it's a bit longer there it is and that's set at 30 degrees it may well be 28 degrees but that's set at 30 degrees and um, that's all ready to go now and putting a 28 degree for example I mean I could measure it and with a protractor and work out what it is um, it doesn't fuss me because I know I'm going back the same length each time uh, and it's probably at 28 degrees or whatever, or 27, and away we go, and that's sharpening that same little micro bevel each time. Um, the same for this, these extension jaws can be used also for um, very fine, uh, very small block plane blades, little narrow ones. Um, same deal. Um, this is a uh, rebate block plane, so you put that in there like that, that'll hold the same as the other blade that's in there whoops that's in there now so again we can put it on here and set it at 30 degrees and that's now ready to be to put a little micro bevel on that uh, rebate block plane away you go all done up the uh, grits until you put a polish on it on the back and these are held securely I can feel that that um, burr on the back uh, these are held securely in there nice and square because everything's all squared up um, and that's how it's best to sharpen I think uh, those small blades so we're covering plain blades the normal block plane blades We've got small block plane blades covered. We've got spoke shave blades covered. We've got rebate block plane. These are a skew, uh, a skew blade, um, which is a little bit tricky to sharpen. Uh, way back, I bought this old jig, which 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 gives the opportunity to put the blade in a, at an angle. So if you look down here now, you'll see that blade is now 90 degrees in this respect or parallel and you can tighten that in there and that you can then sharpen sideways to be honest that you can use that system but if you with a decent with a 25 degree bevel on that you can feel the bevel you can feel it flat on the stone and you can sharpen it by straightening it up and 
and and sharpen, but you're sharpening the whole bevel, um, not just the micro bevel, um, and it can be done that way, which is uh, the main one I use. Um, it's not as good as using, in my opinion, using a, a guide because you can move around a bit and you've got to watch what you're doing and make sure that you're sharpening the whole area. Make sure you've got a burr on the back so you know you're on the edge. But it can be done that way. Um, and uh, that's probably the best way. Or, or you can find one of these old jigs. Um, this is just a jig. The, 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 the feature of this jig is that um, it's, you're able to turn the blade an angle and perhaps line it up. Um, and you can use a, some sort of block on a block of wood on your bench which determines the length and so you go at the same spot each time and put a little micro bevel on there that can work or would work um, so these aren't too bad for that sort of work but honestly one jig for one for one blade in, in your set you, you probably could do that one blade by hand when you're doing it by hand it's very important to I think to concentrate think about the front fingers, not the ones at the back of the blade holding it up here, but the front fingers so you get the right pressure on the blade all the time and concentrate on that flat blade, that bevel running up and down the stone and you should be able to get a good edge on that and sharpen it and back in the, back in the plane. Well that sort of covers what I wanted to cover today which was um, um, getting our plane blades nice and sharp. We've talked about taking dings out, primary bevel, getting that set up, then using our micro bevel through the years, so to speak, of use, until the micro bevel becomes similar or half as big as the, uh, the primary bevel and, and creeps up, and you need to re-establish a primary bevel again. Um, and then odd shaped plane uh, blades and short plane blades using uh, extension jigs on our honing guide. Um, so that's probably a reasonable coverage of uh, how to keep plain blades sharp. Thank you.